Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Oh, please don't ask me why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be perhaps the shoes were too tight. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. But I think that the most likely reason of all might have been his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the moons, staring down from his cave with a sour grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below the town, for he could see that every who down beneath was busy now, hanging a holly who wreath. And I hang their stockings, the Grinch snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. He stood with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to keep Christmas from coming. For tomorrow I know all those two girls and boys will wake bright and early and rush for their toys and the knob. The noise, 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 noise. The race jump and squeal racing round on their wheels. The dance with Jake Tinkler's tied onto their heels. Games like Susan there, Carl Zay. A roller skate type of lacrosse in croquet. Then the Who's, young and old, will sit down to a feast. And they'll feast. And they'll feast. And they'll feast, 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 feast. They'll feast on who pudding and rare who roast feast. Roast beast is a beast I can't stand in the least. But then, they'll do something I hate most of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, will stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'll stand hand in hand. And those who's will start singing. And they'll sing, and they'll sing, and they'll sing, 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 sing! And the more the Grinch thought of this who Christmas thing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I put up with it now. I must find some way to keep Christmas from coming. But how? Then the Grinch got an idea. An awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. <laughs> I know just what to do. He chuckled in his throat. I'll make me a Santa Claus hat and a coat. He chuckled and clucked. What a great, great cheap trick with this coat and this hat. I'll look just like Saint Nick. Now I need is a reindeer. He looked around. But since reindeer was scarce, there were none to be found. That stopped the Grinch. Ha! He simply said, if I can't find me a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, and he got some black thread, and he tied a big horn to the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackled sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, Get up! And the sleigh started down toward the homes for the hoos. They had snooze in their town. All the windows were dark. No one knew he was there. All the who's were all dreaming, sweet dreams, 
without care. But he came to the very first house on the square. This is stop number one. The old Richie Claus hissed as he went to the roof, empty bags in his fist, and he slid down the chimney. Oh, man, what a tight pinch! But a sack could do it then. So could the Grinch. He got stuck only once, for a moment or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace blue, where the little who stockings hung all in a row. These stockings, he Grinched, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk, with a smile most unpleasant, around the whole room. And he took every present, pop guns, bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums. He stuffed them in bags, and the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. But he slumped the icebox. He took the Who's Feast. He took the Who Pudding. He took the Rose Beast. He cleaned up an ice box as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last cab of Who Hash. But he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, Grin the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. As the Grinch took the tree, and he started to shop. He heard a small sound, like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and saw a small who. It was little Cindy Lou Who, who was no more than two. She stared at the bridge and said, Santa Claus, why? Taking our Christmas tree? Why? <laughs> but you know, that old bridge was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie. And he thought it up quick. Why? My sweet little dog. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I take it up to the workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there and I'll bring it back here. <laughs> and it's been full of a small child. And he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And with little Cindy Lou, who was in bed with her cup, he crawled to the chimney and stuffed the tree out. And the last thing he took was a log for the fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar on the walls. He left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crowds much too small for the other whose mouses. It was a quarter past dawn. All the who's still abed, all the who's still a snooze. When he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, their ribbons, their wrappings, their tags, their tinsel, their trimmings, their trappings, ten thousand up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Pow, pow to the hose! He was gradually having, they're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the hose. Down in Whoville, we'll all cry.